Welcome back, Shaliners. Today we're gonna do like a story time, personal thing. There's no celebrity tie-in, but we're gonna talk about something that I know a lot of you guys are dealing with right now. Moving and moving on and moving into another phase of your life. I right now, as I've told you guys, am moving. Tonight is my last like real night in my house. Next time, if I film again, like that picture is gonna be gone because <laughs> the movers are coming tomorrow and packing up my New York City apartment, moving me out of it, and then I'm gonna be going back to California before I go to my new place. And it's weird. I have been in this city since, basically since I graduated. Like I moved home for like maybe a year-ish, and then I came here and I was like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I'm gonna do a video on like how I made it in New York and like how you can make it in New York if this is the city you wanna move to and conquer it, or any big city, Chicago, Miami, Dallas, whatever, or a small city. But today, before we're gonna talk about how to conquer the new place, let's talk about how to leave the old place. When I was a little girl, my mom traveled for work and she would always leave at night <clears throat> and she'd be gone for like three days or five days. But you know, when you're a kid, like time means nothing. Like three days could have been like three weeks, three months, like it was a flat circle. And I would get so, I would just have this feeling in my stomach the day that she was gonna leave. And it's like, I would, I would dread the clock ticking down and like the sun moving across the sky. And I, I just had this feeling in my stomach and it was the most miserable feeling I ever, ever had. And I would have it all the time. And I have that feeling today. Like I just had a picnic with my girlfriend. <laughs> I am sorry that I'm like crying in every other video, but I've been trying to keep myself so busy like a shark that I haven't really had a chance to like digest and process leaving. And I almost feel like moving during this quarantine is like a kind of a blessing because otherwise it would have been a month long goodbye tour. I'm having drinks with every tangential friend and every publicist and bar crawls and, and two different parties and going to all my favorite us. It just would have been endless and I hate long goodbyes. I hate them. They're so, they just kind of shred you. And I've just been trying to like move so fast. I don't have time to feel my feelings, but I'm feeling them now and they are, not my favorite feelings. And I, I'm i not just talking about this to like hear myself talk. I know that you guys are going through this. You might be leaving high school to go to college. You might be leaving college and you're going into the big world. You might be realizing I can't afford to stay in my apartment anymore. I gotta move back to my hometown or I have to move someplace else. You might be realizing I can't stay with this boyfriend. I've gotta pack up my stuff and move out. I know all of us are in some sort of, of shifting state right now, whether it's logistical like I am, or it's just emotional, like this quarantine has brought up a lot of stuff and we're realizing things and I can't live with my parents anymore because now I see how toxic they are, or I can't be this far away from my family anymore and I'm so worried and I don't wanna be in Chicago when they're in Toronto and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot that's been kicked up and we're dealing with just this crazy melange of emotions and mine it's like it's been funneled into like this move you know it's like it's a very real thing that i am pinning all of this on and i know for you guys this is how it's going to and it's like i feel sad <laughs> feel sad i feel excited and really scared <laughs> and worried sort of that i'm making a mistake but excited again it's and this is what sucks about emotions like this is that they're so non-linear trying to describe the emotions you feel about a big life shift is like trying to describe a dream you had you're like and then there was an elephant and suddenly it was alexander skarsgård and we were riding bikes and people are like what and you're like i don't know either what does this mean it's 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 like that you know and i'm trying to process this in a healthy way one of my friends hannah I, she's a friend slash business mentor she's just she's the best and she's been you know texting me a lot lately and and she's like one thing i want you to do she's also a life coach she's like one thing i want you to do is when you feel a feeling that you're afraid of you say i'm afraid i don't like this but i love it i'm afraid of blank and i love it and i was like yeah i don't want to do that <laughs> she's like just try it because you're embracing the suck you're embracing the uncertainty and you're embracing the pain. Your best friend is pain now. 
And now it's like when you make friends with monsters, it's like the movie Monsters, Inc. It's like, I'm friends with the monsters. I'm a creature of the night myself. I don't have anything to be afraid of. Things are afraid of me because now I'm the baddie. I'm, I'm the thing, you know, like I'm the thing that you can't kill. So all day today, I'm like, I feel, ugh, and I love it. I feel afraid and I love it. I feel worried that I'm not gonna make any friends ever again and that I'm gonna miss my friends here so much because I will. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. It's just, it's the best. Oh, I love it so much. It makes my stomach hurt. So try that. When we encounter a fear, just try experimenting with, I love it. Because we talk about this a lot. When you are in a state of stress, a state of cognitive dissonance where the reality does not match what you are telling yourself in your mind, I love my friends, I love my friends, but I'm leaving them. I love my family and they keep me safe, but I'm going away to college. I'm an independent woman, but I have to move home with my family. And when we are in that state, that we're full of cortisol, we're full of the stress hormone, and the stress hormone is literally poison. It is poison. It creates cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, weight gain. I mean, it's weird how your body can basically kill itself, and it does that through stress. And your body doesn't want to kill itself. I mean, clearly some gland in there does, but the rest of you wants to stay alive. So if you can give your mind a life raft, just this rope to grab onto to pull itself out of the sea, it'll take that. And we talk about this during stuff like, I'm so nervous around boys, I just freeze up. And I'm like, they're gay. You tell, you tell yourself, these boys are gay. Or they're my cousins, they're my gay cousins. They're not dudes that I really wanna date. Because, you, and it sounds dumb, but it's effective because your mind is like, okay, great, yes, I, gay cousins sounds good and then that stress hormone goes away it now you've given your mind a weapon against the enemy of stress and i found myself today like i'm so i'm so sad and i love it <laughs> but i do feel kind of better i'm afraid and i like that i'm afraid and i like that i don't like that that's awful but you know what my mind says Oh, Shallon likes to be afraid. Shallon's not afraid of anything. So now when something else scary comes along, she doesn't care. Okay, she doesn't care, so I don't care. Hey guys, hey, hey rest of the brain, let's come up with ways to combat fear and let's come up with coping mechanisms because Shallon said she, she said we're not gonna be afraid. So I mean, this is what we're doing. This is, this is the verdict now. When you tell your mind how something's gonna be, it manifests that way, whether it's, I'm gonna to go to the problem with my crush, or I'm gonna get into that engineering major, or I'm gonna get an interview with that job, or I'm okay with things not being okay. I'm not afraid of being afraid. I'm not afraid of being sad. I can take it. Oh, you think an emotion's gonna kill me? It's not. And I just mentioned that actually in the Machine Gun Kelly, Megan Fox video, that like an emotion has never killed us, but trying to outrun an emotion kills a lot of people. They drink. They do drugs, they get into toxic relationships, right? It's, that's actually very, very common. So when we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not, I'm not afraid of an emotion, then we have no need for those vice, the alcohol, the drugs, the fuck boys. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. I can feel it. And suddenly you start to get stronger. But what if that's kind of a tall order and you don't really like feel that? I know. First of all, bravery is like confidence. You fake it till you make it. You know, like it was just Memorial Day. We, in America, we were thinking a lot about our troops, a lot about people who've sacrificed, a lot about wars. I don't think the majority of, of the young men who stormed the beach in Normandy during World War II felt actually very brave. They were probably scared, scared to death, but they did it anyway, you know? And it's like bravery is almost like not really a thing. It's just like, we're just doing this. Okay, I don't feel like I feel brave. It's like, I feel like I'm just gonna do it. I feel like it's going to happen. And so I'm gonna figure out a way to make the best of it. And one thing Hannah also said was to give a persona 
to your emotions. And and we've we've kind of talked about this, like the demon brain. The demon brain is, okay, so first of all, it's important to get distance between the thinker and the thought. So when we are trying to make decisions or navigate through life, we have, you know, the angel and the devil on our shoulder, right? <clears throat> Hold on. All I have left to drink is Avion in a glass bottle like a douche. What's wrong with me? We have the angel and the devil. And the angel is our logical brain, it's our heart, it's our kindness, it's our intuition, it's all of, our, all of the wonderfulness. The devil is the demon brain. The devil is fear, the devil is doubt, the devil is those negative tape loops that have come from toxic families or people who bullied you or who said you couldn't do something or bad relationships. And if you can just get some distance, if you can acknowledge like, oh, you, I'm, no, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. Thank you for the suggestion, but I'm gonna listen to this brain. I'm gonna listen to the Shallon brain, not the, not the demon brain. And like, <laughs> I call my demon brain crystal sometime because it's like, Travis, get off the roof, get down. Go to, you go to the quick stop. I need cigarettes, shut up. Like it's a, not a person you wanna be around. Crystal by scratchers. Crystal's a bartender. No shade against bartender. I love bartenders. They keep, they make my world go round. But Crystal will fight you. She will open a beer bottle with her teeth. She, she doesn't care that her son lost two fingers to gators. Fuck Obama. Like Crystal is not the kind of person I want to be. Not the kind of person I want to be around. You know, she's always got weird, dirty toenails. I'm not Crystal. And so when I have like that, you ram that lady at Target with your cart. Get out of my goddamn way. Get out, where are the Swiffers in this fucking place? I'm like, that's Crystal talking. I, I'm just gonna be like, excuse me, hi, could I get around you? Do you know where the Swiffers are? Oh, that's the Shallon way of handling it, not the Crystal way. And so I've been trying to give a name to like this, this fear of moving, this fear of stepping into my new chapter of life. Like I have lived my whole adult life in New York City. <laughs> Huh, my whole life, this has been my whole way of living. I haven't owned a car for like, I don't even know how long, you know? And everything's gonna change. And my mom keeps saying, she's like, Shallon, it's not East Berlin. You can go back, <laughs> you can go back. But I know a lot of us, that's not the case. You can't go back to high school. I mean, you can go back to college, but it's not the same. Like, you know when things have changed and you also know in your heart of hearts when it's time to move on. And it's interesting because as an adult, I don't feel this feeling of fear, excitement, trepidation, nostalgia, regret. I don't feel that that much. None of us adults do. I mean, some of us don't ever feel it ever. We stay in our hometowns. We don't risk anything. We don't really change jobs. We marry the first guy we slept with. We don't like this feeling and we're not gonna seek it out. But when you're younger, you feel it a lot. Oh my God, second grade's ending and now we're gonna be in different homerooms. Oh my God, I'm going off to middle school. Oh my God, I'm going off to college. And it's like adults can really insulate themselves from this. So if you're an adult and you're doing something that's a big life shift, good for you. Good for you. Because like I said, not everyone does that. And so don't discount how actually brave you are. Don't, even if you're like, well, I'm not moving because I want to. You always have choices. And if you're moving because you can't afford someplace or you have to get out of a toxic relationship, you're making the right decision for you and your future, okay? You're making the smart, good girl decision. That is brave. That is brave. Sticking something out and, and just staying stagnant to maintain the status quo, that's not a particularly brave thing. I mean, it's understandable, of course. But if you're, if you're doing a big shift, I am proud of you. And I want you to be proud of yourself too. And so, you know, when I started this channel, I started it for teenagers. <clears throat> Cause I thought, you know, teenage girls, like they need so much guidance and you guys have grown up, which is like wild. It's, it's crazy to me. But I started for teenagers cause I'm like teens and young women experience like so many intense emotions all the pressure of an adult you got to like produce 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 your junior year of high school is the most important year of your life it is the most important year of your life it defines so many things that happen after it's an insane amount of pressure to put on people whose brains haven't finished forming yet right we're also dealing with social pressure it's like 
being a teenager, when people shit on teenagers, I'm like, shut up. Like, do you not know what they're going through? Are you out of your mind? They're like, they have the powerlessness of a child, but the responsibility of an adult, plus hormones, they're growing body hair in places they've never had it. Back the fuck off them, okay? So, I understand. <laughs> and my point is, I'm not used to feeling these feelings now as an adult. Like, this is taking me back to being a teenager, being 21 and graduating and just being like, and so because this is an emotion that I haven't felt since then, I kind of go back to like, not that I was immature, but it's like, you kind of go back to that version of yourself. It's like, I don't want to. You know how we just dealt with things then? Cause that was the last time we felt something, right? It takes us right back there. So in terms of naming this emotion, <clears throat> did you ever see the movie Bridesmaids? Oh incredible right incredible you know the scene where um annie and helen play tennis together and it's like super contentious and annie's teammate is carol <laughs> this this actress like she cracks me up she's so funny but <laughs> she's like carol get your shit together carol i've named this feeling that i feel carol because one of my mottos and you guys have heard me say this is that leadership is risk in service of authenticity Leadership is risk in service of authenticity. When you are being a leader, that means you're stepping out on a, on a bit of a ledge, but you're doing it for authentic purposes, to be authentic, to stand up for something that's right. Hey, you know what, guy? No, we're actually not going to make fun of that homeless man because we're drunk. We're not, we're not doing that. I'm going to take a social risk here because to me, it's inauthentic to be mean to someone who's got it hard. All right? And moving is for me a risk in service of my authenticity. It is no longer authentic for me to live in New York. Oh, that tastes like vinegar coming out of my mouth. It just doesn't feel authentic anymore. And so I have to be a leader. And then I'm like, wait, how, what do you mean I'm a leader? I'm not like leading, like a, I'm not like a dis the Pied Piper leading people out of here. Although I am hoping that it's chain migration. All my friends move with me. They might actually. But I realized you have to be a leader in and of yourself, for yourself. Well, who are you leading? And this is where those different characters and those different um, emotional characters come into play. Did you see the movie Inside Out, like the animated one? Kind of like that. That was a riff on this um, 80s sitcom called Herman's Head. And actually, actually, <laughs> a screenwriter friend and I, we were writing a screenplay <clears throat> that is identical to the plot of Inside Out. Identical. It was called Who is Maggie Davenport? Identical. We didn't know Inside Out was coming out. We had the script finished. We were getting ready to present it to studios. Inside Out drops and we're like, okay. Okay. Sometimes it's like that, you know, in Hollywood sometimes. Anyway, you want to name those characters, right? You want to name your different emotions. And that's who you're leading. The main Shallon, the smart, brave Shallon, is the leader. And she's like, get your shit together, Carol. I don't care that you don't want to move. Get your shit together. And Carol needs to cowboy up, pack her shit up, and get on board. And so does Crystal. Get off the roof. Crystal needs to pack her shit up too. Because the Shallon, we're leading the charge. We're leading. Yes, it's a risk, Carol. But it's a risk because I need to feel authentic and I am in the driver's seat here. I'm the main character. You guys are peripheral characters that I don't particularly enjoy, but I understand you live in here too. So you're gonna follow me and I'm gonna lead and that's how that shit's gonna go. What am I saying? When we make big decisions and sometimes even when we make small decisions, we're probably not going to have the approval of the main challenge the Crystal, the Carol, the Dennis, the Gary, all of these other players, but you don't need to. They're gonna get on board. You just have to step forward, inch by inch, step by step, embrace the suck. I don't understand it. I feel, I feel scared, but I love it. And keep moving forward, right? Because Carol's gonna get her shit together. Crystal's gonna get off the roof, okay? And then, we can realize that we don't know everything. And one thing I used to think about emotions or decisions or life in general is that like I had to be 
I had to be 100% all in. I had to 100% love every job. I had 100% love every boyfriend, every friend, everything had to be 100%. And that's not the truth. And that's not the case. And that's not realistic. We are lucky when we make a very big decision if we feel like 50% about it, right? So maybe make that your goal. Say, I don't feel 100% great about going to USC next year. I feel 50% okay. But what 50% is it? Well, I know they have exactly the major I want. I know it's close to my family. I know I can afford it. I should have picked a different school than USC. So expensive. Um, I know that my sister went there and loved it. I know that my best friend is going there. You know, like, look at the data that made you choose this decision. And I'm assuming that the decision and the shift is a happy one. And I understand that that is not always the case. I get that. I get that. But that's okay. There's a set of data points in something that we don't love that we still are on board with, okay? Look, I don't wanna have to move home, but this is the reality of the situation. So me moving home is going to give me a sense of pride. Yes, pride, not shame. No, not shame. You know what people should be ashamed about? Living beyond their means. Buying a Gucci belt when they can't pay their electric bill. Splashing out money on the car that's rented and guess what, it's gonna get repossessed. Tyga, looking at you. I want to be around people who are authentic, who are risky authentic. Oh yeah, they drive a beater, but you know what? It's a beater they can afford. That's the kind of person I want to be friends with. That's an authentic person. That's a leader who has stepped out on an emotional, social, whatever risky ledge, opening themselves up for judgment and ridicule, but they're doing what's authentic to them. And that can be a rare thing in this world. But when we make that commitment to ourselves, this is how I'm gonna live my life. I'm gonna live it risky. And risk, again, risk is like, it's a calculation in our mind. Well, maybe this is gonna work, maybe it's not. That's okay. Try for 50% comfortable. And then try to break down what you're not comfortable with into manageable pieces, diagnose it. Like for me moving, my big fear is that I'm never gonna make friends. And I. The number one question I get from you guys, the number one question, how do I make friends? How do I make friends? I Google a lot of you guys when you send, I mean, like on your Instagram, I look at you guys because I wanna get a sense of like who I'm talking to, if if the advice I'm giving you is gonna resonate. You guys are the cutest. I've always said I have literally pound for pound the most attractive fans on earth, by far, by far. You guys are gorgeous girls. You're so like, you just got your shit together and you've got goals and you've got dreams and you've got shiny hair and you've got glossy lips and the perky tits and your posture's where it should be. And I'm like, if you guys, the one percenters in terms of bad bitches are worried about making friends, then everybody is worried about this. But that's a good thing because that means everyone wants to make friends. The fact that this is the number one question I get gives me comfort because I'm like, hey, everyone out there wants to make connections. And that's part of the reason why like, you know, I, it got haywire, but like I loved the Shalantourage having like WhatsApp groups and Reddit threads and stuff because I want you guys to connect with each other because I know that this is something we all want. And so me moving, my big fear is I'm not going to make friends. And if I do, they're going to be like, whatever. Oh, they're going to be named like Michaela. And they don't, they're like, mm, I like Chardonnay. I like, I'm a Sauv Blanc. I'm team Sauv Blanc, okay? And if you're a white wine drinker, you know that there are teams. <laughs> there are teams. You know, I'm afraid that they're going to be like weird, like lame and judgy and mm. But okay, let's break this down logically. Do I honestly think that knowing, knowing with empirical evidence, with quite a large sample size, so many girls out there wanna make, friend, wanna make friends, do I really think I'm not gonna be able to? When have I gone someplace and not been able to make friends? Did you have friends in elementary school? Yes. Did you have middle school? Yeah. High school? Yes. College? Yes. New York? Yes. So, okay, so I'm dismantling that fear. So now instead of a 50% decision, I'm up to 60, maybe 75. Okay, what else? Let's try to dismantle that. We don't have to dismantle it forever. We can just dismantle it enough to keep moving forward, to just get through the day, to give our mind that lifeline out of the cognitive dissonance, out of the cortisol stress hormone, and to keep moving forward into the decision that we've made or the decision that's been thrust upon us. Like we always say, 
we can't change what happens, we can change what it means. And sometimes that means looking at something in hindsight and being like, okay, that was a learning experience. But sometimes that means we're in it and what it means is not fear and terror and I hate this. It means this is an opportunity for me to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. For me to get comfortable with not having all the answers and not being 100% because what in life is 100%? You order something in a restaurant, are you 100% sure you're gonna love it? The only people who answer yes to that are the people who only eat at one place and they only order one thing. And if you're on this channel, I bet you're not that person. I bet you're the person who wants to try new things. Oh, Vietnamese food, ooh, Ethiopian food, ooh, a vat of caviar, that's my personal dream. So if we live that life of risk in service of authenticity, if we live that life of leadership, we're gonna to have to get okay with not having 100% certainty about everything. That's the risk, that's the gamble, but that's also the reward. So I feel your love, like, you know, you guys have been super encouraging about me moving and it's, it's helpful for me to like talk it out, you know? And I know you guys are going through a lot and so we can all talk it out together. Please connect in the comments, don't be hateful, like don't be a dick, just, Go somewhere else, literally anywhere. I, I don't care, I, you, you choose. And let's connect with each other and let's build each other up. Like it's my favorite thing to look at the comments and see like someone posting a problem and you guys all responding and being there for each other. And I'm like, get them, because we can do this together. Everything in life that's worth doing is scary. Everything, learning to walk, learning to drive, learning how to have sex, it's all scary. You don't feel 100% about any of it. And at every single one of those things, every single stage, there's a part of you that's like, I can't do this, I, I can't do this. But you do. And whatever is coming next, whatever brought you to this video, you're gonna overcome this too. And you're gonna be in a whole new level, right? Because that's how life works. We move on and we move up. Even if it feels like a setback right now, it's not. If you can use it to get comfortable with change and uncertainty, it's not a setback, it's a setup. For more, click like and subscribe. I'm gonna be doing more videos. Obviously, like, it's my job. Duh. Why did I even say that? Find me on Instagram for some inspirational quotes. It's another place you guys can connect with each other. I also let you weigh in on video topics. We've got some more celeb things coming up. And if you want a video shout out or a little video pep talk, find me on Cameo at ShallonXO. See you later, Shalloners.